This is the sixth Sunday in our series on 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul's great discussion of the doctrine of the resurrection. And our verses today are verses 50 through 53. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, when I think about the trumpet, I think immediately about the military. I remember the time when I was a new recruit to the Navy uh, at Newport, Rhode Island. And as a, a new recruit, I was a member of a, a company uh, of recruits, and we were led by a chief, a senior enlisted man. And our chief would, uh, of course, in the early days, get us up in the middle of the night and um, yell at us and make us uh, do all sorts of uh, crazy things. But over time, uh, the purpose of uh, his work was to try to build us into one unit, to make us obedient to orders. And one of the ways that we practiced this was learning to march. And so he would get us up early in the morning, we would be out marching, and as the sun would come up, we would hear the trumpet call Reveille, uh, telling everyone else on base that it's time to wake up and reminding us that we didn't get much sleep the previous night. And then we would be marching out on base all a day, and uh, we would all be looking forward to the sound of the trumpet at the end of the day, uh, marking the time when we could go back into our uh, barracks and get at least a few hours of sleep. And about 10 minutes before taps would sound, there would be a single horn blast, a single trumpet blast, a big ba, and that would kind of remind everyone on base that it's getting dark, uh, go back to your homes. And after that horn would blast, everyone would kind of scurry around and find a, their way back to their homes so that the, uh, the base would kind of empty out. But on this particular day, our chief did not take us back home. He actually marched us into the middle of a field and he lined us up uh, facing the flag with the sunset behind. And then he gave us a speech. And the speech was not uh, super eloquent. Uh, he wasn't trained in rhetoric or oratory, but it was a powerful speech from a man who had served for many years uh, in the Navy, going out to sea and giving up and sacrificing much for his country. He said, look at all these people. Everyone has heard the trumpet sound and they are running back into their barracks so that they can avoid having to stop when they hear taps. But don't be like that, he said. It is an honor to be able to stop and to give attention to the flag as it descends and to remember all those who gave their lives for us. And then indeed taps began and we heard the trumpet sound and the flag begin to descend with the sunset in the background. And at that moment, as our chief saluted, Two C-130 large cargo planes flew out overhead, and there was not a dry eye left in our company. Well, today in this sermon, I have three points I would like to address. The trumpet, the truth, and transformation. The trumpet, the truth, and transformation. So the first point is the trumpet. And uh, to talk about the trumpet, I have a trumpet here, and uh, uh, I think it would be helpful to talk a little bit about how the trumpet works. So one of the common misconceptions about a trumpet is that you simply blow into a trumpet and then it makes a sound. 
And this is not true, and I'll uh, demonstrate. You see, you can blow into a trumpet and still not make any sound. So how does a trumpet work? Well, first, the lips have to make a sound. They have to make a vibration, something like this. And that sound then goes into the mouthpiece to make another sound, like this. That mouthpiece then goes into the trumpet, which further magnifies the sound. And then the valves are used simply to change the relative length of the tubing in order to create different notes. So a trumpet only works when there is some previous sound, and its job is to magnify that sound. So that's the trumpet. The second point is truth. Well, why is it that in the Bible the idea of the trumpet is always used when discussing the last day? In theology, we call this eschatology, the study of the end times. And in all the passages about the end times, there's a discussion of the trumpet. We have one in Joel chapter 2, where it says, Blow a trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Uh, similarly, we have a discussion of the trumpet in the last days in Jesus' prophetic uh, speeches, both in Mark and Matthew. Uh, we have it in Paul, both in our reading from 1 Corinthians 15 and also in Thessalonians. And then, of course, in the book of Revelation, there is the description of many trumpet sounds. So what is being magnified? It is the truth of God. The truth that God is the creator of heavens and the earth. That God desires all of his creation to worship him. That God is coming in holiness and righteousness that his creation may worship him. And he is coming so that all those who do not will bend the knee. As uh, uh, it reads in Philippians uh, chapter 2, at the end, every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So there is this great truth which goes out uh, in that end day. Now, in our own times, the truth has been spoken. God's word is truth, and God sent his word, Jesus Christ, to take on flesh and to live among us and to share this good news of God, the holy God who desires to know and to love his people and to be known and loved by them. But not everyone responds to this truth. We read, for example, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, where Paul describes how people do respond to the truth. It says, For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away into myths. So the truth has been spoken in our world, but many people do not listen to it. They willfully ignore the truth that God has. So part of God's mission to us as believers is to be trumpets, is to be the instruments for the proclamation, the magnification of God's truth. And that is why Jesus, when he was raised from the dead, sent out his disciples, commissioning them to go into the, all the world, making disciples, preaching the good news, and teaching them all that he had commanded. But at the last day, there will be some special moment and a special trumpet, which Paul describes in 1 Corinthians 15. And this leads to our third point of transformation. The trumpet, the truth, and transformation. 
This moment is depicted in the art that Jared Bogus has made for this week. We see in this image the trumpet, which is sounding forth this final call, and then emerging from uh, the wind is the imperishable man. We saw the imperishable man last week beginning to rise up out of the dust, and now he is rising up to stand preparing to take his place amidst the legions of life, the army of God, which will go forth against the forces of Satan and of hell. Paul says, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we shall be changed. We are used to the trumpet sounding taps at a funeral to mark the moment when life has ended and we commit the body to the earth. But in the last day, the trumpet will be a sign of new life, of rebirth and of resurrection, of the rising of the new body, that will not be perishable, but will be imperishable, that will not die again. Similarly, we are used to the sound of the trumpet as a military call to attack, uh, sending forth an army on a charge, many of them going to their death. And yet this trumpet on the last day will be a sign not of death, but of new life. Now, Jesus teaches that the church uh, is well-established, that he will build it upon a rock. And he says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, sometimes when we hear this image, this uh, story, this idea of the gates of hell not prevailing against the church, we imagine the church as a kind of fortress, uh, successfully defending itself against the the waves and the hordes of Satan and uh, the army of hell. But that's not the image that Jesus gives. Jesus says, the gates of hell shall not prevail. In other words, who is attacking and who is defending? It's not Satan and hell that is attacking. It's Christ and his church. They are the ones who are storming the gates of hell, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So in that last day, when that trumpet sounds, we will rise up again, putting on imperishability and immortality, that we can charge forth with the army of the Lord never to die again, and we will storm Hell itself, whose gates shall not prevail, and our Lord will triumph over death. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.